start with the, the global views. Um, so in the, on the global side, what we see with corporate banking is sort of in parallel what we see with retail banking. Um, retail banking side has been probably a little further ahead um, because of the consumer demands, the COVID opportunities. But there's a huge shift toward modernizing all of their major applications, particularly legacy applications, um, moving them into a modern cloud-enabled architecture so they can start to migrate some of those mission-critical applications into a public or private cloud setup. Um, there's also a big focus on serving their corporate customers better. So real-time transactions, the ability of onboarding customers in a much more seamless way, leveraging data and AI. We have several banks globally that have taken the onboarding process from weeks down to basically six hours, uh, unless it's an exceptionally odd corporate entity. Um, we also see a big push around financial crime on the corporate side, particularly around money laundering, right? Um, so those are some of the trends. But I think the things we're going to see continue on, particularly this and into next year, is still the sort of explosion of the use of machine learning and AI um, in particular. And I see that as being um, a continuing trend seeping into all aspects of corporate banking and treasury. Um, on the regulatory side, partially because of things like Silicon Valley Bank, the treasury entities are getting a lot more regulatory supervisory focus. So as a result, you know, the, the lack of proper asset liability management in, in, in banks that have failed has really put um, a lot of, um, let's say, vision or, or spotlight on, on what the banks are doing in terms of their asset liability management. And that's also where technology is starting to transform, accelerate, make the analysis in some cases more sophisticated. But it's, um, you know, that's probably the sort of the regulatory sort of change that we're seeing. How does this uh, translate into context of the I think Richard has given a very good summary of what we see from a global perspective. The three or four areas we're really seeing a lot of activity happening in Asia, cash management, so that they can manage their real-time position. So that's one big area, payments, high-value payments. That's another area we're seeing a lot of activity happening. The third area which Richard mentioned about is money. This is coming under scrutiny if you know about what is happening in ASEAN. Um, thanks to some of the activities that happen, that is coming under a lot of scrutiny. And combined with all of this, I would say the regulatory piece that Richard mentioned, the reporting side, um, I think what the financial institutions are being asked to is uh, provide better reporting. Which is, reporting has always been there, it's a quality of reporting uh, and, and the, the timeliness of reporting, which is getting more.